Good morning. My name's Dave. Uh, today I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to uh, compare a Baldor grinder with a Rikon grinder. This is my Baldor that I've had for about 20 years. I bought from Craft Supplies uh, back then. It was about $300 at the time, three and a quarter if I remember right. Uh, it is a quarter horsepower, six inch grinder. I used uh, ceramic stones for a long time until I learned about CBN. And at that point, uh, there's, there's no going back. So this is the CBN from D-Way Tools up in uh, Washington. Dave uh, Schweitzer, quite an excellent man. Uh, makes them, balances them, does them all himself. But I wanted to compare uh, how smooth the Baldor was, how quiet it is, that kind of thing. So let's take a quick look. Okay, pops up to speed real quick. This is a, a low speed grinder and uh, runs very, very smooth. I've really enjoyed it over all these years. So uh, I've got my Wolverine system on here. This is my rolling stand for when I'm working at the lathe. Uh, let's take a look at the Rikon. Okay, the Rikon is a one horsepower and I'll be putting two CBN wheels on it, eight inch CBN wheels, uh, a 180 and an 80. So uh, let's take a minute and take a look, okay? Okay, here we go. This is a Rikon, one horsepower, eight inch, low speed grinder. Comes with the light, a lot of criticism on the light by uh, reviews. Uh, and we wanna see if it's smooth, if it comes up to speed, and of course, uh, whether it vibrates or not. So let's take a quick look. Looks like it comes up to speed instantly, within a couple seconds at least. Uh, the light's a little irritating, I can see. We'll see how it goes when we get the wheels turned on. But uh, that's, that's extremely smooth. So I mentioned that the Baldor grinder was three and a quarter. This was, I believe, 189 is what I paid for it. Uh, it doesn't come with the guards or anything. I don't need that and I don't need to have them in a drawer somewhere. So uh, let's go a little further. I want to put a, uh, a hall sensor on here and see what the RPM is, okay? All right, we're set up. I have a, uh, a hall sensor with a tachometer. I have my uh, magnet on the shaft. I also have the bell door set up here off camera. We'll check that one as well. So uh, let's give it a go, see what kind of RPM we get. Seventeen ninety six, eighteen hundred. All righty. Take me a minute. Move the camera, and we'll do the Baldor. We're all set up. We got our tack. We got our hall sensor. We got a magnet on the the wheel. Let's take a look. Give me just a second here. There we are. Another 1800 RPM, smooth and quiet as can be. All right, between the two, again, about three and a quarter, I believe it is. 25 years ago, Baldor, always an excellent product. But we gotta say, the Rikon, for about 159, I believe it was, uh, runs very, very smooth. Let's take a minute, put the CBN wheels on it, Let's see what we've got, okay? Here we are down to the wire. We've got our 80 grit on the right hand side and I've got a 180 for the left hand side. As I've mentioned before, uh, this is a D-Way Tools CBN wheel. I like David's products. Uh, as you can see, he has the, uh, the grit engraved, laser engraved on the wheel. Also know he uses the very finest CBN product to make these wheels. All his wheels are balanced as well. As you can see, this one has uh, one balancing point. Also, all his wheels have one inch holes in them. Or, and then you simply buy a flange for the size of grinder you have. This one is a 5 8 My Baldor is half inch over there. So all you do is insert the flange, pop it in there. The flange goes to the grinder side. 
slide it right up. Pretty difficult so far, right? Dave supplies a washer. You put the washer on. Remember the left side is reverse threaded. I have the magnet on here for the hall sensor still. Tighten it up nicely. Alrighty, let's give it a spin. Comes up to speed real quick. Very, very nice. Let's check the sensor. Oops. And we have our 1795 without a problem. So there we have it. $159, I double checked. This is from Wood Turner's Wonders. I had a chance to talk to Ken, excellent man, very, very, very helpful. He is the only one around that I was able to find that offered this grinder without the, the protective guards, all that kind of stuff. Face it, you're gonna take it off, put it in a drawer somewhere in your shop, never look at it again or keep moving it around and moving around. I didn't wanna bother with it. So for $160, I think this was quite a find. As you can see, it's very smooth, pops up to speed right away, holds its RPM. Nice to be able to put my 8 inch wheels on here. And, uh, you know, I think I'm going to be a happy guy as far as the light goes. A lot of people criticize the light. I just want to use it for that spot where I can see that I've got the right grinding angle to the wheel. All I got to do now is outfit it over here to my grinder stand, and uh, I think I'll be set for another. Hey, 20, 25 years, I can still do it. Okay, time for the wrap up. Well, we bought a one horsepower Rikon grinder, $159 from Wood Turner Wonders. Now I got to work with Ken, asked him all the questions I wanted to, and a very generous man with his time. So again, he sold this grinder for $159 didn't come with the guards, you got the shafts and you got your bolts, that's all you got. That's all I wanted, $159, what a value. So we've seen that it turns on and comes to speed right away, a couple of seconds, it holds its speed, it produces the speed it's supposed to, I think we've got a great value at $159. The D-Way wheels, as I keep saying, I've always been sold on D-Way tools. Great product, great man, Dave Schweitzer. Uh, we're very fortunate to have him in the industry. Very accessible. So I think I've done well here. I'm a happy guy. I hope this helped you out in helping you pick a grinder, understanding a little bit about CBN wheels and how to set them up. So I'll let it go at that. This ends Turning on the Beast for this week. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Let's do one more wrap up. I took the time this afternoon and uh, attached the, the grinder to my base. Uh, it took a little more doing. This grinder ended up being, of course, a little bit taller. So I had to recalculate where the V-arm holder was. Also, the distance between the arbor and the top of the V-arm holder base. That was important. Now that distance from here to where the V-arm holder sits on its base is six and a quarter to six and a half inches, according to Wolverine. Also, it was important to get the V-arm holder in the right plane, right to the edge of the, uh, the grinding wheel and the V-arm holder uh, in, in plane with each other. So there we have it. Now I wanted to take a minute. I did have a chance to, to take care of my tools. Uh, we had talked about the light. Uh, I can tell you from my own experience, the light is absolutely worthless. It, uh, it only comes on when you turn the grinder on, so using it to uh, use your V-arm and set up your, your, uh, your grind is worthless because the light won't come on. You have to have the thing running. Uh, and it doesn't send enough illumination in this light to see anything with it. It does no good. Something else I did back here, uh, I always put two rare earth magnets behind here so that when I put my V-arm down, it snaps right in and stays in place. A little something you might try. I keep a measuring block for my stick out on the, uh, for the jig. 
Uh, I keep everything at hand in my drawer. I've got my calipers, depth gauge. I've got extra things all over the place here. I keep my tools in here, some of them anyway, and uh, everything works out real well for me. Also have my robo rest on here. So anyway, we're all set up, we're ready to go, already sharpened some tools, everything works really nice. I'm so happy to have the system. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to the video, and I hope you just keep on turning and have a great day. Thanks so much.